Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. I'm an absolutely massive fan of the build it, draw it, write it, say it approach when it comes to any kind of form or calculation. I think it's a really useful tool for teachers or parents to help children unpick the maths and really understand what's going on behind those formal methods. The other math massive bonus is that in Key Stage 1, children will have used loads of concrete objects and pictorials to support them with their calculation. And when we move to those formal methods, we need to bear that in mind and really provide a bridge for them to get from what they can do to the new learning. So in this video, I'm going to take you through how I would approach teaching columnar addition with a build it, draw it, write it, say it approach. I hope you find it useful. So for your information, here are the national curriculum objectives for teaching columnar addition in England. You will notice that there's no new objective for year six. So in year six, they just continue practicing the objective from year five. But the idea is that children leave primary school with being able to add numbers with more than four digits using the formal method of columnar addition. And in this video, we'll do, I will work through the progression of these statements. So why use this approach? What's the point? Well, firstly, it gives children a real concrete experience and by doing it this way, they get to see the actual structure of the addition. Through using manipulatives and things like Numicon with holes and um, Deans with little markings, it supports their counting with lots of different values. And actually going through the whole process of doing it and drawing it and talking about it and seeing it, it really does help them remember more. If you've been using a CPA approach, it connects with previous learning on addition and the draw in the book really supports the idea of maths books being revision guides so children can look back and see what they have done. Finally, I think the reasoning opportunities are endless with the build it, draw it because there's lots to see. Now I recommend perhaps using a template when you first start with this approach and I always made a very simple one as you can see on the screen and if I was using it for one child I'd use an A4 but A3 I think if you're going to do paired or small group work. And children can actually put their build on the template and then if you laminate it they can actually draw the, do the draw right next to it and write the calculation and it even record what they're saying. Now one thing to mention is the build it, draw it, write it, say it does not have to follow that order. I do recommend starting with the build and that naturally has a draw to follow but the write it and say it are interweaved through the week. The manipulatives that you decide to use really depend on what your children or your child at home knows and perhaps what they've used before. So if they still need a bit of help with counting, Numicon would be suitable. Um, maybe a step up then, perhaps base 10, 10 or Deans, they're still countable because they've got markings, but they're organised in a different way because they're organised into hundreds, tens and ones. Place value counters, organised the same as base 10, but no markings. And you could use colour counters instead, um, but you'd probably have to produce a key. And if you do that, then you really want children to sort of become quite flexible about understanding it doesn't have to always be a yellow counter that's the hundreds. Whatever you decide to do, they all end to a draw in the book. I always take the opportunity when I'm teaching columnar addition to do some work on estimating and rounding. And the purpose of this is to not only practice other math skills, but so when they look at their answer, they can go back to their estimate and see if it's way off. And if it is, they know they've made a mistake. I wouldn't necessarily get them to do this for every question because it can be quite time consuming, but maybe they could do it for three out of the five they were doing in their maths book. So you need to model how you round to the nearest 10 and 100 and 1,000 and link that to an estimation and why you're rounding. And there's an example on the screen that you can read through. But this is all about making sense of their estimate and knowing if their answer might be wrong. Next, we're going to have a look at the build it, draw it, write it, say it in action. Now, I am a bit limited on space, so I've tried to include as much as I can in my camera angle. However, what I haven't really been able to do is show the answer using manipulatives. So I just wanted to highlight at this point that when you're watching this video, when you're actually doing it in class or at home with your child, make sure that you've got enough manipulatives so they can actually put the manipulatives in the answer box at the bottom of the columnar edition. 
So you're going to start your week with a build and this is a really important part of this approach. So the build gives the children an opportunity to build what they see, what they can see as the right. So here's a calculation, 36 plus 22, and here is the build that would go with it. And on this occasion, I have used Dean's or Base 10 to do that. Now it's really important to let them build because actually it gives them a chance to sort of unpick the structure of addition, but also it tells you a lot as a teacher or a parent at home about what they can do. So for example, can they read the number 36 and simply represent it, but can they also partition it into tens and ones? So these are magnetic base 10, so they're quite big, um, but actually the ones you tend to buy in school or have at home would be a little bit smaller, but you do need to bear in mind how much space you've got. So this is the same question, but I built it with Numicon. So it just depends what manipulatives uh, you like to use in your classroom or at home. But what's great about Numicon is that for some children it's still countable. So obviously we were hoping they're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. There are five tens, 50. Um, but if they can't and they still need some practice on their counting, and they can use the holes to help them. And finally, here is the same build with place value counters. So children are getting the opportunity to make the calculation. I would put an addition sign in there and an equal sign, and they can represent the answer using the manipulative that they have used. They could then go to the right and they could fill it in based on what they found out. So let's think about the draw it for this question, 36 plus 22. Now the draw it, what's really important is that it replicates the build that the children have done. And the reason we wanted to replicate it is so that perhaps next term when we come back to the same calculation, they can look in their maths book and they will capture a visual of what they did. Now it's possible that you could take photographs of the build and children can annotate it, but in lots of cases for evidence purposes as well, it's good to have some of this recorded in the book. So what we've got here is a draw it example or two draw it examples. I haven't drawn the Numicon. Uh, you can draw around the Numicon in the maths books if you want to, um, but when the numbers get really big that is quite limiting because it takes up quite a lot of space. Now before I talk about the draw it I just want to mention about the expanded form. So I do recommend you check your calculation policy if you're a teacher to make sure how you go from part partitioning horizontal method to a vertical method and it could well be that you have an expanded form in your calculation policy. And if you're a parent and you're not sure, have a look on your school's website or ask your class teacher and they'll be able to tell you. So we've got an example here of the base 10 draw it. It's quite an efficient draw. Children like to call them chips and beans. I quite like that. But you can see that this replicates exactly what we did with the base 10 when we built it. The same with place value counters. I've also included a say it here because the say it doesn't have to come at the end. It could be for some children that they need to build it for quite a few days before they draw it. Other children might do a build and a draw and a write and a say it on the same day. So it doesn't exactly have to stay, build it, draw it, write it, say it. Be flexible depending on what your children need. So if we were going to do a draw it and a compact form, this is the language that we like to use. So we always start in the ones column. So we've got six ones plus two ones. How many ones have we got? we've got eight of those things we call ones. Then we go to the tens column. We have three tens plus two tens. How many tens have we got? We've got five of those things we call 10. Five tens equal 50. And we can go back to our, our draw and we can check that it's 50 in total if we need to. So 36 add 22 equals 58. So let's look at a slightly harder question. So we've got hundreds, tens and ones, and you might notice we're gonna have some carrying here. So I would argue that the build is vitally important at this stage. So if children have been using the build to add tens and ones or hundreds, tens and ones with no carrying, it's vital we carry that idea on so that we can exemplify what happens, what actually happens in the maths. So place value counters I find to be particularly useful when we get to these types of numbers. Base 10 equally as good. I don't find Numicon as useful at this stage just because it's so big um, and if your children are still needing to count holes it's probable that they, these questions are a little bit too tricky for them anyway. So the bit I like about this is we've got these 11 ones, these 6 ones and these 5 ones here and children can count them and we can do lots of work about what 11 is made up of and if we put it into a place value chart we can see that 11 is made up of 1, 10, 
and one one. So that will really help us when we go to the compact form. So let's think about it in the compact form and the draw it. So we've done it with the build and then we can express it in the maths books as a draw. And just note that if we were using base 10, for example, we represent the hundreds as a square because when we actually use the manipulatives, a hundred is made up of a 10 by 10 square. So let's talk through how we would look at this. So we have six ones plus five ones. So we know that that makes 11 ones in total. And as I mentioned before, we can put that into a place value chart and recognize it all for some children, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, we might model it also with the draw there. We can see we can find ten and we have one left over. So six plus five equals eleven. We put our one in our ones column and we carry our one ten. And we need to be really careful that we're not just saying carry one. And please check your calculation policy because some schools will put that one ten to be carried at the top and some will put it at the bottom. So you just need to be consistent. So we have two tens plus three tens plus one ten. How many tens have we got? We've got six tens. We've got one hundred plus one hundred. How many hundreds have we got? We have got two of those things we call hundred. So 126 plus 135 equals 261. And I think you can see how if you go through the build it, draw it, write it, say it method, by the time you get to the write it on a compact form, all this experience of draw it and build it is really going to help. This is a harder question again, and it's an example of the type of question that if your child's in year five or six, or if you're a year five, six teacher, this is the kind of question they have to do. So adding, adding numbers with more than four digits. So I'm absolutely passionate about keeping the build it, draw it, write it, say it, right through key stage two, because I really do think it makes a difference. Now, if your class or your child at home has had lots of experience with the build it, draw it, write it, say it in previous years, they may not need to do quite as much when we get to numbers like this, but I still advocate just giving them a few examples so that you can make sure that they understand what they're doing. So with this number, we've got quite a bit of carrying. So we can see in the ones column, we've got four ones plus six ones. And we've obviously done lots of work on what that's made up of. And it makes 10. And 10 is made up of zero ones and one of those things we call 10. And like I said before, just check your calculation policy to see where you need to put that carried 10. We've got two tens plus two tens plus another 10. We've got five tens in total. How many hundreds have we got? We've got 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. We've got nine of those things we call 100. When we get to the thousands column, we've got six thousands plus five thousand. Now 6,000 plus 5,000 makes 11,000. So we're gonna to need to do some carrying. And we can exemplify that by looking at 11,000 in a place value chart and seeing what it's made up of. And we can see that 11,000 is made up of one ten thousand and one thousand. So we can put our one carry below to show our tens of thousands. And here is our one thousand. And now we've nearly done it, we've got two tens of thousands or 20,000, add one tens of thousands, add another tens of thousands. How many tens of thousands have we got? We've got two, three, four tens of thousands. And then we can say it by saying 26,524 add 15,426 equals 41,950. The build it, draw it, write it, say it approach lends itself beautifully to reasoning because one of the things children find hard with reasoning is they don't know where to start. But by using this approach, you're providing them with a visual that they can hook their ideas on. And two, on the screen are two great examples from amazing websites, Toy Theatre and MathSpot, if you're on the hunt for virtual manipulatives. So you could use these ideas and present them with a build, like on screen, and they could have to reason about it. Maybe they would have to write the calculation to go with the problem. Perhaps you'd ask them to draw it or write it in digits or write it in words. You could extend their reason further by giving them an incorrect build or an incorrect draw and they have to identify the mistake and do it, cor and do it correctly with the right. 
I really like also doing matching games, so presenting children with lots of different visuals and the formal method and seeing if they can match them together. So that's my build it, draw it, write it, say it approach to column art edition. I really hope you found it useful. Please like and comment below with any other ideas that you have. I'm always keen to hear them. Check out the other videos on my YouTube channel and head over to my primary maths page, Curious Maths, on Facebook, where there are lots more fun ideas. Thanks very much for watching.